What's going on, traders? How we doing out there? Welcome to Money Mitch. Yes, I'm in my nutcracker outfit today. Yes, my Christmas sweater. It is Christmas first, and I have the Christmas spirit. Even though the market's down, we're going to look on up. We're going to see what's going on out there. Like always, guys, smash the like button and welcome to Money Mitch. It's time for Money Making Mitch. When investors need a story, we're going to the moon. Welcome to Money Mitch, where story is everything. I'm here to find you the next opportunity. It's all about the green hands. Now we all know the bull market is here to stay. Money Mitch. What's going on, traders? I don't know if you guys were just with us with Christopher, but uh, if you guys are and you guys just did some back testing, welcome on over, Chris. How we doing, dude? Thanks for letting me come. I tell you, this is a uh, this is such a pleasure for me to come and, and join you guys. Hey, like always, you know, one of the things that we do is we stay with the markets and I, I go after you on Wednesday and I actually like to do so. Um, reason why is I think backtesting is such an important key aspect of trading uh, that a lot of traders just don't take the time to do. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, one of the things that we have to be able to do is work a plan. Right. A trading plan, whichever it, it may be. Um Maybe you like when the sky is purple outside, you go long. Hey, at least you got a trading plan, right? I mean, and that's what backtesting really helps you do, right? Is is going back and not not only taking that trading plan that you have now, but putting it to the test, right? You know, honestly, backtesting totally changed everything. And, and uh, I learned it from my friend, Steve Burns. Uh, you know, he's got, I think, close to a million followers across all the platforms and i was just there was one day where he 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 and i were talking and he goes yeah i used to trade that that way too chris but then i wanted to make money and i was like "Ooh, dang that hurt that one hurt and uh so after that point i really embodied what he was talking about and for the fact that like you can test and see the returns on anything anywhere anytime and it's not like you're making up lines on a chart right I gave the example uh, on the webinar that it was like there there's no upside down bullish triangle staircase cup and handle moonshot inside of the price of $123. It's not there. But over the last handful of days, you can take an average of those prices and then you can see what happened when things worked around those prices and what a difference that made. It, it just became clear as day to me that this is the way to trade. Definitely, because at the end of the day, you need to have some kind of edge, whatever it's going to be. Figure what that edge is going to be for you. And if you don't know what an edge is, then maybe look into what that is. And if you really do have an edge in your trading system, because if you look back and you tell yourself, uh, I think this is the edge, it probably isn't. It probably isn't. Let's just be honest. That yeah. means that you might need to just continue working on the strategy to figure out what exactly the edge is is in your strategy and how you can use that to your strength so that it goes into the profits because i mean at the end of the day that's what we're doing this for right we're not here to yeah. waste time but yeah I mean, there, there's really three core components of trading the the first component is the edge that's your offensive side right that's where you're like i know that this has shown it will gotta work. have a game plan it may not work in the future it may not but you know historically that this has worked then You've got to have your defensive side, and that's your risk management. That's where you're, you really have to size your positions correctly. Because if it doesn't work, and you yellowed everything into you know uh, GME calls, and they're gone, you have nothing left. So you have to size your position correctly. One of the market wizards I had on my podcast, his his uh, quote, Larry Height, is um, you know you have to know when to bet when you have to bet your chips, but you can't continue to bet if you've lost all your chips and that's the the position sizing in a nutshell and then the third component is trade psychology and that's balancing the two that's not letting fear or greed or anything overcome you because when it overcomes you you've lost you've lost already if you are if you are so hell-bent on tesla is going to go to five thousand dollars a share and it doesn't i can't help you 
you're you're toast. Game over. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the overall market. I know that it's there's not too many people here right now. And for you guys that are out here, I give you guys props. Why? Because you're willing to hang around even on the tough days. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the spy and see how tough of a day it really was. Oh, you here. think that's what it is? Everybody lost their money and went home. Right? Oh, you know how it is, Christopher. Yeah. On those days that you, they, if you saw your account not only in the red but go deep into the red, it's hard. It's hard to look at your account, especially after hours. You know, in the morning tomorrow, people come back because they think they have the opportunity again, and so that is what we do have every single market day. But the truth is, it's hard to, to stick around on days like today. Days like today, I think, is a great lesson in learning why I think it's always great to not only have one way of trading, unless you're extremely disciplined, because at the end of the day, markets like this can get really trappy, right? Um, a market today started pushing on up. Let's take a look at it on a 15 minute, not look at this sideways down action that we got, but right out the gates, right? So we've been fighting multiple times to get above this 463.50. We've been trying to get above there. Every single time we've done it, we've failed. If you look back here, the 26, right? So we got above that, slightly above, failed. We got down low, right? Then we come here. We start testing back above, up, fail. So then it comes back below. And that's now about like the second or third time that we've failed to get back above that level. Now we're breaking down on the low side of these levels. And now it's really looking like we're pulling back, right? We, we, we had this sideways consolidation and it actually broke to the downside. This was our one day, our one day chance to get back. Uh, we got this one day chance on Monday and... It just didn't hold on. It didn't hold that support there. And from that moment, it really started looking bearish. You could see multiple highs showing up there and trying to get above that level, quickly sweeping down. Now, the question is where are we going to stop or where can we stop? Um, so I have two trend lines drawn. I have one that's drawn all the way back from kind of June 14th. I have another one that's kind of more off of this period low right here, which is the 29th. Um, if we look at that, we kind of go into kind of more of the 445 area. Um, so, you know, there's not too much more that I think it can get into that trend line. But of course, who's to know that trend line is going to hold here this time? Uh, we've held it plenty of times before. Uh, 443 is around the area where I'm going to look for it to pull back into. And we'll see if these can hold. But really, I think the biggest, most concern to me is the Qs because the Qs had a really topping effect here at the 400s we tried multiple times to get above that 400 i was even calling it out today same thing okay can we get above this 400 can we get above this 400 finally we get above the 400 today and what does it do it literally puts a harmy right there it it gave you that hanging man like <laughs> grab me by the <laughs> neck right now because i'm about to come down and boy it hung there, man. It just, from that point on, it was just straight down move on the 15. This is why I love the 15 minute chart because a lot of times it's going to help you find a little bit more of the trend than, let's say, the one minute because, oh, yeah. you're, you know, you, you're looking at that one minute, you're easily caught up in that opening rip that we were going up to that 400 because this was a good move. This was a good move up here. It definitely did have some leg and you could see it by what? by the volume that was coming in. It, it had that leg for a second, but quickly got turned around, running into sellers right at a key point. So definitely, the to me, until we get back above 400, I'm not feeling bullish, and it doesn't look pretty from here. On the no. queues, it looks like we're going down closer towards, uh, I would say closer down towards these levels. Um, we broke out of this kind of symmetrical area, and so I kind of draw that trend here draw this line up, try to get it back to this level here. So we're talking probably more into this area here, 370s, it could come back. And that would be a big turnaround. One of the key stocks to me that shows me this is a hard turnaround is I have two stocks that I keep on watch. Why? Because it's in. it feels like it's in everybody's long-term portfolio. Let's talk about those two. Let me guess, let me guess. Apple Go for it. Apple. Facebook. Ooh, you got you got one out of the two. I'm gonna give it's you one Apple. more guess. Uh, Apple's correct. 
I'm going to give you one, one more guess. guess. Tesla? Tesla, the Tesla oh, dragon. Because at the end of the day, if you look at it, and you look at it, when the S&P does over 1% moves, you're going to also see a decent day in Tesla. Why? I think this, to me, is the portfolio effect. It, it's just that it just sits in everybody's portfolio, and people have like the, the reoccurring money just added to it, and they just reoccur, re, just adding to Tesla, adding to Tesla, adding to Tesla. I don't blame them for it because it, it has it helped out or has it worked? Hell yeah, it's worked if you invested in Tesla and just kept adding. So now this is a big turnaround for me. And the question is, how hard of a turnaround is it going to be? Because Tesla is, I mean, essentially, I mean, if you look at the weekly, look at this thing. Look at that. And to me, this looks like a complete fifth wave move. And now, at least on the weekly, we're looking for some pullback action. Question is, how far is it going to come down? Today, I did not like this turnaround in Tesla. It really started looking like it wanted to come back above that VWAP and hold. And then the flush came. With that flush, uh, that's this is just not what we want to see. Because if you start looking around, let's take a look at Apple. Look how Apple did kind of that same flush turnaround. And this one was looking as hot as it could be lately. And even a stock that was as hot as it can be turned around. This is why we look at something called market breadth, right? And, yes. and if there's advancers and decliners into the run. What does that mean, guys? So let, let's talk a little bit about that, Chris, because you and I uh, kind of study this and we kind of learn about this. But I think a lot of traders now, they just don't even look at breadth volume. They don't they don't look to see what's going up, what's going down. I know you bring up a chart uh, constantly um, and we could bring that chart up if you yeah, want. Yeah, I got to. it right here. Let me add it to the stream. Yeah, excellent. The MMFI. This has set new lows for the last year. And, and what is that? So, right, just so it's the percent of stocks. Us. So it's the percent of stocks across all the S&P 500 that are above their 50-day moving average. So it, it's a real easy indicator to say how many stocks are in their own bull market or not. And uh, Mark Minervini, um, you know, U U.S. investing champion, 1997, one of my friends. This is one of the things he keys off of. I mean, he even mm -hmm. puts it out on his Twitter. And if you pay attention, like... You can see what people are doing if you just read between the lines. Yeah, you and, know, you, you got the question. I think, uh, what do hedgies do on days like this? They were already looking at this. They probably were already had had the heads up. Like, hey, heads up, look dude, at this. I, I did not initiate a new long position since last Tuesday, I think. And then on Friday, we were done. We were out. There's and, been warning signs, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. You know when. Hang on. I'm, I'm going to take over the charts for just a second. Yeah, let's the, do it. The, there's an old adage. Oh, hang on. It's on my other screen. No worries. Try to warn me. The old adage is that long-term support can turn into long-term resistance. And long-term resistance can turn into long-term support. And, you know, you like to draw the lines on the screen. I like to use the moving averages. But it's the same concept. Same exact concept. same concept. Just a day. different method. And while for a long time we saw the 10 day giving us support, if you look not that long ago, the 10 day was giving us resistance. Now, the 10 day might do the exact same thing here today going mm -hmm. forward because it, it hit that point and then went down. That was yep. its, uh, its open point. So, yeah, yeah. So with moving averages, just kind of stating for people out there, when you when you see them tailing on the bottom side, that's a nice bullish look, right, Christopher? We have mm -hmm. all of them tailing mm -hmm. on the bottom side. In this case, what are they starting to do? They're starting to tail on the top side. Definitely not what you want to be seeing if you're trying to look for a bullish trend, right? No. And so at this point, it's kind of like head, head over, like just watching out on top of you. This is when I like to have some cash available to open some different sided positions. Let's say if you've just been the overall long trader for a while, these are the moments when you, by having some cash and maybe opening up some short positions, if you're still long some other positions you're trying to hold on for right now, you don't see uh, kind of that complete turnaround in that stock yet. And you're 
you're, you're still holding on. I think you have to be able to short. There's too many traders nowadays that can only go long. And right now is a key example of trades where you could be making some money and giving yourself a hedge or just hedging your trade overall. Right. So let's go into some of those things and yeah. what I'm seeing out there. I, I would I would say that if you are going to short, you have to like if you keep your risk tight on the upside, you have to keep it three times as tight on the downside. Mm -hmm. Why is it'll get away from you before you even know it? And then you're looking at a loser and you're like, how did this happen? Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you've got to keep your risk so much tighter to the downside. Yeah. And I actually what I like to do is. I to, to explain that, Chris, what I usually do is I would tell people if you're looking for shorts, I actually expand a little bit on my reward and risk. So my ratio that I'm normally going for is a three to one. When I'll start going after shorts, I'll start going more like a five to one, uh, because what I want to look for is for those big elevator washouts. Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking for in your shorts. You're not looking for a stair step down because those stair step down a lot of the times when we're in these bear trends lead to what Chris is talking, that spike right back up where it's one candle up and it could have been 30 candles down. That was this week, dude. You know, we, we were down. What day was that? Um, the 26th. What day of the week was that? I don't remember. Uh, that was Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Friday was our, our big down day. And then Monday was our big up day. And it was like, I was describing it. It's, it's, it, it felt like it was up infinity because yesterday we just got monkey hammered. And then the day after that, we're up, you know, one and a half, two percent. And you're like, wow, I was stupid selling yesterday, wasn't I? Right. That, that's mm -hmm. the emotionalness behind it. And then the following day, we have another two percent down day. And then today, another down day. So no, you weren't stupid. You were smart. It just feels weird when it moves like that. It's tough. It's definitely yeah. tough to deal with when the market's like this. One of the things that I always talk about is call that level that you're looking for it to hold. For me, that was that 463. And so I was when we got above that today, I said, okay, now we're above it. It doesn't matter if we're above it. Can we close here? And that's why you always hear Christopher talk about how the close is so important. Because it doesn't matter. I mean, you can wick all you want. But if you don't close there, that doesn't show strength. Mitch, I probably gave you and all your friends five figures worth of dollars trying to trying to learn that I need to trade at the end of the day. Because so many times I would get in 9 30, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, like, oh, this is looking bullish as could be. And then by the end of the day, I'm like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, gee, I have ruined everything. But I, all I had to do was just be patient, sit on my hands for three hours, and then I wouldn't even touch this trade. One of the things that also helps you is by going at the end of the day, you'll be able to kind of see the full pattern of the intraday. A lot of times we go off of daily candles, right, in, in pre-market, right? But then well, by the time we are actually trading the intraday, are we paying attention to the daily? Because the daily is going to end at, at the end of the day and give you that closing level. It's so important to know that closing level is supporting the trend. So let's go ahead. Let's see what we can trade on the downside, at least for what I'm seeing out there could be potential trades. So areas where I think you guys should take a look. I already talked about Tesla. We just started seeing the ARKK really oh, start taking Kathy. a hit. Kathy's getting destroyed. <laughs> and I talked about how if it broke 100 again, it was time to start going short and baby. So th th at that point, I'm going to go ahead and we've already brought on this uh, ETF. We brought on the CEO that made this ETF. So I'm calling Sark on the long side, not Kathy Short, because Kathy Short is going to cost you a lot to borrow. So that's mm. exactly why he created this short, uh, this ETF, this inverse ETF. It's not necessarily an attack against Kathy. <laughs> you know what I just thought of as you're, you're doing this? What, what could S arc mean yes yeah, short me, arc no, no no suck it arc we're going suck the it, other arc. way it's so it could be so many <laughs> That's things. exactly what i thought <laughs> I, I mean i talked about this when it was in this consolidation look at this breakout you just saw that's showing you something what is this showing you i think this is showing you that these growth stocks are really getting hit so what do we need to do we need to go back to arkk and find out what is in arkk 
All right, so let's find out. Let's see what is getting hit the hardest. Look at By you. By the way, I would like to say, this is smart. I like your strategy here. Instead of trying to short sell the ETF, you're looking for a long opportunity, right? You're looking for the inverse opportunity. I like that a lot. I think that that's a, a pretty, pretty, pretty clever way to do it. I usually just use options, call some puts, but I like your method of doing it too for someone who doesn't trade options. It's smart. Exactly. Or maybe someone that's never traded short, right? They're only used to seeing charts on the long side. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. It, especially in this market. Mm, uh, yeah. So let's, let's take a look here. U Unity turning around hard. This is a, a big reason. This was one of her winners right now. And it just turned around fast there so the big thing for her is going to be does it hold up here there's a little bit of resistance that it could find some hold here hopefully unity finds that hold over there if not it could easily start heading down to the next levels right and so let's look at her some of her top uh trades her top holdings like roku look at that chart no bueno no, look at zoom bueno. No bueno. Look at that circle you got hanging out there. <laughs> Can we get back in there? Ah, no. You, 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 that's that's called a dead cat bounce. <laughs> yeah. That's called a dead cat bounce right there. When you break big support, you get a nice volume candle. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is coming back. Those, those were bulls getting in here. No, that was Kathy getting crushed. <laughs> that's what that was. <laughs> so definitely we're, we're seeing these just get – hammered and i mean these are the te these are like the the top position tesla's 10 percent roku's 5.4 percent t doc let's take a look at t doc which is five percent look at that also you know, getting crushed these these are the uh the stay at home stocks the zooms and the tel teledoc and unity you know when you pulled unity up i was like oh man that's the assassin's creed it's getting crushed yeah. i don't know about you but i loved me some assassin's creed yeah uh, it, it's not looking good let's just no. say that Getting crushed, which is interesting, right? Because the the news they want to tell you it's the Omicron variant, and mm -hmm. if it is the Omicron variant, then why aren't these doing well? I mean, exactly, the people who right? are making these moves, they are not making it based on an Omicron variant. So one of the things is start looking for stocks that are in that are that were strong and have broken a major trend line. So we're looking not for the short term pattern; we're looking more at the intermediate or the primary trend changing. And this is what I'm starting to see on a lot of charts. Let's start going into a different area here. So I wanna go into and take us into a weak area that I saw, which is software and applications. Why? Because it's really starting to look bad here, guys. One of the major ones that I think led the party here was Asana's turnaround. Asana's turnaround just shows you right here, what? Another dead cat bounce. So let's start looking at some of these other ones and seeing if we're kind of seeing the same kind of weakness. So you guys know how I love working from my indus industries backwards. And so let's look at which ones are down the most here. Um, we're going to scroll on up and see which ones are really getting hit. It looks like new IPOs and these other software stocks that made monster moves. So stocks that I'm looking to maybe start collapsing. Look at this stock. Looked really bullish here. Was trying what to break the, out. What is the... Uh... What is that one pattern? I, I can't remember exactly. It has something to do with like a neck and maybe like arms Ooh. or hair. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a head and shoulders if you see. Oh, Lord. that's the one. The, the the one that you scratch your hell your head and you get a little <laughs> a little. A little I saw that a mile it. away, dude. When you can see them that clearly, everybody sees the same thing, and they trade it. Right. It's mm -hmm. not that you, you're you smarter than the market. Everybody's seeing the same thing and they're all doing the same thing. So if you see it, everybody out there is doing it, too. But that's a good thing because yeah, you can it, just play along with them. Another thing that I like to look for, too, is this stock. When a stock looks like it wants to break out and all of a sudden there is a massive turnaround in that trend. That's something to pay attention to, guys. Watch. Watch that, especially when you get that moment of where you thought. Like right here, I'm sure when this went through 400, the people that were long in this one, they were like money in the bank. And the next day came and it was just like, boom, through 400, down to 320. Ouch. And then you saw it come back here and that's your chance 
probably not to go ahead and say I'm coming back to 400, but understand always where your out is. For some reason, if you got gapped down and you're down there towards 340s, and for some reason you were able to manage on this consolidation, this sideways consolidation, I think there's always an opportunity to get out and you even got that opportunity again. Don't try to always be the hero, especially when you're seeing what Chris and I pointed at the beginning, which was how the market breadth and the, is not showing that strength. There's not just a whole bunch of winners lying around. It's more what losers lying around. So you don't want to catch losers. You want to hopefully be out of them and, and be managing your trade. But of course, there's a lot out here. Uh, SPT um, looking at, look at this sprout social. Look at mm. this trend that it's about to break. You see this trend here? What do you mean about to break? Well, <laughs> I mean, timber, right? Yeah. So th this is what I'm trying to talk to you guys. So like that trend line, look for those trend lines that are we're, we're, like this stock was trending forever. And all of a sudden, oh, no. Those are the stocks that I, I would really stay away from and be careful because they could come crashing down. EX5, look at this brand new IPO. Looks perfect. All right, all right. IPOs. Hang on a second. You're not trading IPOs, are you? No, but more long. I'm calling out that be right. careful with the new IPOs, right? Well, that's what that's. I mean, that's a, a trading rule from ages ago, like William O'Neill. I'll tell you though, yeah. Christopher. Early on in this year, if you were trading IPOs, you made a killing. That doesn't mean it's going to work. You have no idea where Mark. it's going. You're guessing at that point. There is mm -hmm. no trend. Sentiment, right? It's it's what market you're in, right? Because if you if you don't stick with the data, the data there for a second there was pointing upside though. Mm -hmm. in, in IPOs, literally, you, you could just buy and you were making money. But that doesn't always last. No. Markets change and trends change. Things can get what's called euphoric. That's what we were seeing in those IPOs. That and euphoria. Yeah. And now yeah, how look yeah. of those turned Euphoria. out, right? Yeah. yeah. And same thing can happen with everything that anything that booms can what? Bust. Uh, only go to the moon. No, there's no bust, bust. baby. No, moon. There's no moon bust. baby. There's, I'll tell you, there's only, if you think there's only moon, ask the guys <laughs> that tried to get to the moon. It isn't always Rocket ship way. emojis. Get them all lined up. All right. EVBG is the last one there that I'd say be careful. Look at this one. Look how this one had such a nice trend such a nice trend and now look at look at this change look at that last like holy candles. moly that's right really ugly that's scary right christopher when a stock trends for that long that, that long. many red candles in a row uh, i mean if you're still holding it after those points either you're a long-term investor or you're not paying attention and if you're not paying attention you're not a trader and, and that's why another thing is set some alerts, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, at the very least. Definitely. All right. So the last thing I want to go into is looking at real estate because this is a scary area for me. Um, I look at this. Uh, I use TC2000 and it gives me this indice of real estate. And I do not like this chart. One. I'm, I'm, I'm bit. a bit surprised by that. That, one that monster sell-off in the last bit for real estate. Real estate can be somewhat of a flight to safety because it, uh -huh. it's a little bit different than uh, just buying, you know, Apple or Tesla, like your your two go-tos. So that kind of sell-off there is is a bit uh, a bit alarming to me. Yeah, it, it's scary to me too. Uh, it does. It, it just closed below that, so I want to get it two days closed below that trend, so they're really showing that real crack. But to me, this is scary. There's some names here I'd watch out for, maybe on the downside to play. IRM, look how this was doing that same kind of look that I tell you guys where it looks like it wants to break out. And then all of a sudden, they pull the rug on you. That's exactly how this one looks. And it looks like it's heading to that trend to break. We'll see if this one keeps coming down. You know, AM. Mitch, as you're going through these, sorry to interrupt you, man. Are but you, like, good? you know, the rising tide lifts all ships. And we're seeing the opposite here. Mitch is just going down the list. And it's just one after another after another that's getting monkey hammered. And really, at this point, being defensive is the greatest plan that you yeah. could have. 100%. Yeah, I'll even wrap up with that. Like, it's definitely about that. It's not necessarily only to maybe make money on the downside, but always understand that there's times where we need to do what? 
one thing only risk manage because if there's one thing that's important and i talk about this often as a beginner trader the one thing you want to be good at is survival survive the game play the game daily the longer that you build that experience the better off you will be the worst experience is blowing and blowing and blowing and blowing through accounts because the only thing you're going to blow through is your own confidence. Mm -hmm. And once you lose that, I mean, you toast. I mean, you're don't toast. even play anymore. Yeah, don't just, even play. Just take your uh, take your ball and go home. You know what I mean? Uh, and a lot of people may have had that this week. It's been a hard week. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so if, if and Jim's talking about into real estate that you're, you're scaring me, Mitch. It's not to scare you, Jim. It's always about having plan B, plan C. As mm -hmm. traders, we always need to be flexible. We need to be able to switch positions. We can't lean one way and always look that way because like always, the market doesn't just go one direction. We will get corrections. Who knows if we're getting into bear territory? Of course, this is nowhere near bear territory yet. Um, this doesn't even look like we're getting into recession, but for right now, it's just light on risk manage. So that's what we're going to be doing, guys. Stick around, guys. Battle through. If you guys have any questions, you guys can always reach out to us. Christopher, Where was your tag still just Christopher? Oh, no, it's 10 Minutes Stock Trader, right? Yeah, 10 Minutes Stock Trader.com. That's At, where you go. Yeah, there you go, guys. If you guys want to go ahead and DM us, yeah, you guys can always the write there us a go. message. 10 Minutes Stock There it is. Definitely. <laughs> right above, guys. So definitely check it out. And there's one last thing we want to leave you off with. Christopher, I think you have a – Did can I say – I'm going to use the word fire webinar Dude, for you guys out there. Check that is an out. understatement of the century. So, so yeah. what is this, it about and, and what are we going to learn if we go and, and click that video? All right. So over on the 10 Minute Stock Trader YouTube channel, just go type in 10 Minute Stock Trader. This is a private members only webinar that I put up for one week. It will come down on Monday. So you have to watch it fast. This is, it, it, it's sensationally titled how to find, how to easily discover proven back tested winners over a hundred percent without being stuck at a trading screen all day. And legitimately I break down exactly how I find these winners. And honestly, Mitch, I'm going to do a whole webinar in the future about this, but the market is not efficient. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if your, your viewers know this, but I kind of break down exactly how and why you can basically debunk the efficient market theory inside this webinar. So, yeah, I mean, only if you want to, you know, I, I take this back. Uh, don't watch this if you love money. I mean, if you hate money, then just don't watch it. You know, it's fine. It's best. But if you do love money and you like the idea of what money can do for you, then maybe you should, you know, check it out. It's worth it. Plus, it'll right. be gone soon, so you better do it quick. Definitely threw up that link in the chat there, guys. You guys definitely check it out. And if you guys didn't catch the show prior, Chris was just on back testing, so you guys can check that out also. Definitely appreciate you coming on, Christopher. And one last thing, Alex is talking about. At what point do we discuss how to find the monster trade? So. We'll, I'll go back and I'll, I'll kind of adjust here and show you guys exactly what I wanted to talk about. One I'm sorry, stocks, Alex. It's my fault. I hijacked no worries, today's no episode. Worries. That was all on me, dude. It's all good. It's all good, guys. So one of the things that I wanted to show, guys, is always use your sector to industry analysis to find the trading ideas. That's what I do. Um, because at the end of the day, one thing that I don't want to do is try to be biased to find the trades. I want to look at the charts, let them speak out to me. Then I want to do a little bit more research and find out, hey, is my do my technicals start matching up to the stories? Then when they match up to the stories, we can go into certain stocks and look at their fundamentals, see if they're positive, see if it's negative. How are the analysts looking at these stocks? Last thing I wanted to bring up was a stock today. Uh, we, we wanted to bring up ABUS here. Uh, we did take on live trading, guys, an analysis on this stock live for you guys and so that was really uh kind of the stock that i wanted to get into oh nice i just closed my chart there <laughs> uh you know goes... i'll pull it up no, no I, I, I have i have other charts here like always oh right. my gosh what happened to this abus all right so i got them right here here you go guys 
I'll just pull these to the side here. This Boom. is an insane candle, by the way, on today Boom. with those wicks on both sides. <laughs> up to 650 and down to 409. Yeah, I, I mean, I used a, a little bit of my analysis here on our live trading show. Uh, we have our live trading show. So um, we were watching this stock and, and really it was a call out by one of our traders. What I started seeing was they it, it was on the one minute that they were watching it. They were watching the stock. They saw it coming down here, staying down below VWAP. They were looking for a VWAP pop to go into. So what, when I see a stock that was really bullish pre-market popped and then just pretty much fades away at the open. What I'm looking for is an hour of consolidation near the support. So that's exactly what I started looking for. I said, so how many how many 15 minute candles do we got down there? Let's take a look here. So I started looking and I said, hold on, we got a, just about four candles building an hour of support there. So let's see if we can get above that and close there and start opening on this candle. That next candle, we wanna see it get into that bullish mode and that's exactly what we saw on this one. So I set the trade there, 450. The low on this candle would be our out. So 416 on that side. And then what I said was once we got into this candle was let's start trying to use maybe a, a trailing stop here. Look for it to keep pushing on up. And what we're going to look for is the advancing three soldiers here. So three green candles showing up, giving us that little bullish engulfing look right here. And now we're going to look for the continuation. And that's exactly what you get on the next candle. Boom. It actually fulfills that. That gives us that nice bullish look that, hey, confirmation. Now you're getting more patterns showing you that bullish look. Let's see if we get that extension to five. And it actually led to five right there on the next candle. And this is when we started getting off live. But then you started seeing what? Boom. Then it got that rocket momentum. And it went all the way up there to 650 from a 450 call out there. And it's really not about that it that you guys can make that 40% gain also. It's more along looking at that process that I was taking. I looked for that hourly consolidation. And then also looked for the pattern to match as confirmation to show that we were still bullish in the trade. That's why I said from that, that point, once we close this candle, you can actually move up to the VWAP, at least from my strategy. I'd hold there at VWAP and just let the candles go. If it goes up and breaks out, you got your momentum trade. Of course, you want to always try to have your reward. And that's what this box was about. That's what this box was about. I like to draw it out, draw out the complete trade so you guys know the risk and the reward. And if you guys want to see more trades like that, Alex, stick around, come to live trading. We're going to keep going through these, and it's not necessarily always about the money made in these, but more along how the approach that we go into it. We take, uh, we have a trader on there that's taking, I, dare I say it, controlled YOLOs. Uh, so definitely uh, come check it out. I, I knew Christopher was going to get a kick out of that one. Yeah, for sure. But definitely, hey, if you guys get a chance and you haven't done so, live trading with Benzinga, it's definitely growing, and I suggest you guys take a look. Um, and we gotta bring you on there, Christopher, sometime. Maybe we'll get sneaky Dude, on there. I don't there. day trade. I would I know, be sitting but... there like twiddling my thumbs, like y'all hey. have fun. I'll come at the end of the day. <laughs> hey, you, 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 but it, at the end of the day, it's like me. I, I try really not to even get into these kind of trades anymore. But I could still see them, and I could still. I've been there, and I could tell you guys that's what it's about, and the knowledge is there, and th that what that shows you also is that there's no perfect way, guys. You can no. find the knowledge. No, and, and in we fact, find a way that what you were just described, I was thinking this as you're going through all this, right? We all at the end of the day are trying to get on a trend and ride that trend as high as it can go and keep our risk in check. And I really appreciate you going through your, your thought process here because your thought process is different than mine, but we still have the same goal. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And at the end of the day, one thing that's going to happen is we are going to battle and stick to the skills that we've been building for years and years, just like you guys out there need to keep doing. All right, guys, that's going to do it for Money Mitch today. I hope you guys enjoyed our overtime action here. Smash that like. Check out that video that Christopher talked about earlier. It's a great webinar. I'll throw up the link one more time, and we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks like for having always, me. Smash that like button before you get on out of here. You didn't do so. Got to go ahead and do it.